Hello and welcome back to another video. Well, this video is gonna be a little bit different. I just want to share my thoughts and things that I do to polish my platformer game. And so yeah, let's just get started talking about it, you know, just gonna let the game play plays. So basically, oops, the enemy just died, what the hell? Uh, so the first thing that I do, usually just want to make everything feels good. So I start with the player movement for sure. So if you might, maybe it's not noticeable here, but I added like a squash and stretch uh, animation, secondary animation to the player animation. So if when the player jump and also when the player landed. And also the jump dust, right? I mean, that's just the basic. Uh, you need to add jump dust because if you don't add jump dust, then something is missing. And then it's not, you cannot call your game a game. Uh, let's take a look at the player node here and, you know, go to squash and stretch animation. So the first one is the jumping, right? So it started by the player like being squash and stretched. Again, I'm going to use that terms a lot. So please bear with me. And then it's come back to normal scale after like the player reach the zero, uh, what is it? Vertical speed, basically like that, right? And also when the player landed, there is a, a brief animation like 0 0.3 second to be exact. Where the player is, uh, the player's head kind of bopping, you know, but it's achieved not by animating the sprite itself, but it's animating the scale of the sprite. And also if you see this, I structured it like sprite anchor and there is the player sprite where the sprite frames is stored. So you don't really, uh, I think it's much more flexible doing it this way, uh, but I don't know, let me know if you do, what do you think about this uh, structure? So that's a squash and stretch for the player movement, right? Still talking about the player movement, I guess let's run the game and what else? Oh, maybe you see the UI here. It is actually designed for mobile games and, or designed for a mobile phone. And a lot of design is catered towards that. But anyway, so I'm playing with joystick now. So the UI is just kind of gone. Uh, so the second one is the double jump, right? The double jump. I think it's much better to communicate to the player that you already use or tell the player that they already use the second jump, you know? So instead of making the jump is kind of feel the same or look the same, so you add like this flipping animation to signify that, hey, you already use the second jump, you cannot really jump anymore. And so yeah, that's I think what makes it interesting, right? And not only that is actually also for gameplay reasons. So this is actually taken or stolen inspired by Tower Fortress, a mobile game, uh, where the player can attack after their second, uh, what is it, jump. So you can actually damage enemy by doing the flippity, dippity thingy. So if you only have like, if you only do like uh, one jump, you cannot stomp on them. But if you like do the second jump, then you can stomp on them. Right. Next one, death animation. Speaking of death animation, because I just died. So the death animation is inspired by Hades and Mega Man for sure. But the Hades part is that the screen fades to black and then it focuses on the player itself telling like signifying that, hey, you died, you know, so this is the death animation. You're going to see this a lot. So I think it's better for you to keep it brief, to keep it simple. So it's not like getting too tiring to tiresome or exhausting, I don't know what's the correct adjective there, for the player to see your death animation over and over again, right? So again, let, let me die, right? Let, I let the enemy hit me here. Ooh, all right. Ooh. Uh, maybe speaking of also like the death animation, okay, let's talk about the death animation there, of course, because I'm going to die. There you go. So that's, that's, the, <clears throat> that's the death animation, right? If we take a look at the player death node, so I actually separated the death node and also the main player node because I think it's just much, much easier to control to do that, right? So this is the death animation. To cover the screen, like the whole screen fade to black or to fade the screen to black and still maintaining your player character still on the screen, I do this uh, one simple trick with the color rectangle and then make it like as large as possible. Again, I tried it on my phone, so it doesn't really have any uh, performance effect or any lagging, you know, or any frame drops or whatever. So I think it's fine to use this method. Uh, but I don't know, let me know if you had a problem if you use this method. And so yeah, basically that. So again, when the player damage, it's always signified that, uh, or signified by turning the player to red, white, and flashing, and then 
you know the di uh, the death animation is just the player going up turning to white and then emitting the ring uh particle thingy just like the mega man has right okay so that's death animation let's talk about the enemy hit sometimes when you make games you don't feel like your impact you know it doesn't really have any uh where's the frame is dropping here let me check oh why is it 30 fps i hate it sometimes it is 30 sometimes it's 60. anyway let me restart maybe it will make no it's not it's okay so basically what i did to make uh the enemy is more or the enemy hits more impactful is that i will i added uh enemy or flashing vfx right there and not only that but also squash and stretch again dude you, uh, squash and stretch is your friend here we take a look at the animation here and then there's a status animation here so so it's not only like the enemy is flashing but also the enemy is uh squashing or stretching as well right so there is like an impact that is felt or that is being experienced by the uh, enemy so oh one more no uh, one note i guess if you are trying to tint the uh, the whole sprite you cannot really use the modulate here so let's say if we go here so if you try to modulate the enemy it will not go fully modulate you know especially when it's red or you try to make it white it's not gonna turn white why i don't know because it's modulating not really like a uh, filling all the was it the, the sprite right so what i did was i added a custom material custom tinting shader here i mean it's pretty simple but i'm not gonna dive too much into it and maybe i should make a what is it the full tutorial on this one maybe in the future i don't know let me know in the comment so so basically that right again the enemy hit i just added a squashed uh, animation and also like the enemy being uh what is it uh flashed right being flashed or the enemy flashing All right so yeah what's next let me take a look at my notes a death animation explosion all right a little bit of a tips when you are making an uh, explosion vfx so let's see explosion explosion vfx for the uh fix pixel art but yeah i don't know i think you can use this principle for any art style though so again i am inspired by Mega Man explosion or maybe like early snk explosion it's really really uh, look gorgeous you know a lot of people can achieve it a lot of games can achieve it uh good but this is my shortcut i should say so i just use uh what is it particle system and also animated particle particles basically so it's just a uh, consist of frames right you may see why is it upside down because i enabled like the aligned y align y because if you don't do that then i don't know it's kind of inverted but anyway so i also added spark with a limited frame and also that's one thing that i think what makes uh, pixel art look better <coughs> pixel art particle system look better is that the fps oh, where's the fps time here the fps is actually not 60 right it's more like limited frame per second so it's i actually add 20 so this is how it looks like if it is 60. it looks too smooth right and it doesn't really jive or it doesn't really gel with the smoke particle with limited frame so i just set it to 20. i mean you can set it like lower or higher it depends on the need that you want to have and so yeah and also glowing mask here just to tell the player how big is the explosion or what's the general shape right and then you turn it off or you make it invisible so yeah this is like the animation in its full glory All right so that's for the explosion what's next parallax all right well oops the parallax setup i just use like three actually four backgrounds like there is the gradient overlay I know you can see it better here gradient overlay and then also there is the first building and then the second building on the back and then the last one is the sky there right so let me kill this guy first okay let me just move on so i think in this prototype or in this uh specific example the 
parallax scrolling do the heavy lifting, you know, or does the heavy lifting because everything is just kind of look blend at the moment, you know, the tile is just like dark, black and whatever. But I think it's, uh, yeah, so the parallax background is kind of giving you like that sense of depth and sense of variety to your background itself. So nothing really is interesting, I guess. Like it's just a basic uh, Godot par parallax system. And maybe just the next thing is that maybe talk about the damage animation, the player damage animation. It is the same, basically. So I had a squash and stretched and using the landing uh, was it animation. So I don't really need to make another animation. Oh, I died. All right, let me restart then. Ooh, all right, let's see. Damage me. There you go. So not only that. After the damage animation, it has like the invisibility frame signified by the flashing light or by the characters flashing white. And also I added a chromatic aberration when the player is damaged. All right, it looks so subtle, but I think it's enough to signify that, hey, you're being hurt. So there you go. All right. And one more thing uh, is the camera work because it is designed to be played uh, on mobile. So I tried to keep everything kind of like close and big. Mobile phone, mobile screen, uh, mobile phone screen is kind of like small. It has like high resolution. So try to, every, to keep everything like uh, zoomed in basically. And the camera work also, it's kind of following the enemy. If there is an enemy close by, then it will like kind of follow them. Because I don't want to cheat the player or cheese the player by try to kill them with something that is invisible so if you see there is a actually enemy above so that's why the camera like moving upward there oops and so yeah so basically that's like the rule of thumb for me when i program the camera work so i don't want the player to be to feel cheated you know oh that guy just fell off oops so basically like this, for example, right? It will lock down to the closest enemies and try to follow them. But after a certain uh, distance, they will just like unlock the camera itself. So it becomes like more free form. Right. So I guess that's it. That's all that I could share or at least something that is inter uh, interesting to me. I mean, the rest is just kind of uh, standard, which is just add a screen shake when you're shooting. Uh, I think you should like be able to turn toggle in toggle it on and off because some player feels like motion sickness or whatnot and yeah i don't know let me know what you think of this type of video do you enjoy this one and yeah thank you so much for subscribing though because it's like cross the line of uh, a thousand subscriber at the moment and i think i'll upload this example to my coffee uh account coffee slash little striker id if you want to donate if you want to support the channel and also i open like a commission work if you want me to work on your uh, game you can also order something and yeah you can get like a lot of perks i also have set a goals to make uh what is it to make a project i'm i'm going to release this game maybe uh, on steam but anyway let me know and also i just want to share that i am trying to work on a course because someone left left a comment and i think that's such a good idea and actually think about it a lot and uh talking about like a full on course what kind of course do you think i should make and what do you want to see what do you need you know so yeah just let me know everything down in the comments so maybe i'll work on it uh but i think i want to make it as affordable as possible uh but still fair for everybody who works on that course so yeah I guess that's it. Thank you so much for watching though. And if you have something, if you have a question, please leave down in a comment. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And yeah, keep making games, guys. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Have a nice day.